safe. Lord, you have been our dwelling place throughout all generations. Before the mountains were born, or you brought forth the earth and the world, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. Surely God is my salvation and not be afraid. The Lord is my strength and my song. He hath become my salvation. For the Lord is the rock eternal. My son, forget not my law. Jesus, speaking to his disciples, said, Let not your heart be troubled, for he who believe in God, believe also in me. May I invite us at this time to turn our to the opening hymn, How Great Thou Art. Can take it in. 
dead on the cross, my burdens gladly bearing, he bled and died to take away my sin. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to me. How great the heart, how great the heart, when sings my soul, my Savior God to be. How great the Shout of acclamation and take me home. What joy shall fill my heart? Then I shall bow in a humble adoration and be proclaimed. My God, how great the heart Then sings my soul My Savior God to me How great the heart How great the heart Then sings my soul, my Savior God to me. How great thou art, how great thou art. God. Praise the Lord. At this time, we remain standing with our heads. We invite the Reverend Dr. Noel Hand to come and to offer prayers. Let us pray. Eternal God and our ever loving Father, we pause in this atmosphere to recognize who you are. You are God, your Lord your savior, your friend, your brother. Lord, as we worship you today, we worship you in celebration of the life of our brother, Delroy Campbell. We thank you, Lord, for his contribution to his community and family. And we thank you, Lord, for his commitment to service. We pray, Lord God, that in this service today, as we reflect and as we think about his contribution, we pray, Lord, that our own lives would come before you so that, Lord, as we search ourselves, we'll know exactly where we are with you. So, Lord, in this service, we pray that you will speak to our hearts, speak into our minds, and cause us to become conscious of who we are, that we are all on borrowed time. And that there comes a moment as we journey through this life when our names will be called just the same. So Lord, I pray that this service of thanksgiving would be a message to all of us here that Lord, you will call us one day and what will our answer be. Lord, we ask now for your blessings upon this service. We ask Lord for your content covering over his wife and family. And pray almighty God that as we journey together, that your name will be glorified. Bless the service, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. You may be seated.
just want to give thanks to God for each and every person present here who you have come to lend support as we give thanks for the life of a servant of the Lord who has departed. Um, this morning, leading the service, officiating, Minister the Reverend Dr. Noel Han, who has just prayed, is the host pastor of this church. We also have with us overseer, the Reverend W.J. Dawson, who is the overseer of the Tabernacle of Praise Ministries from the USA. Um, we have uh, Bishop Delroy, Dr. West, um, overseer, Reverend Harvey Dacosta of the church, is an acronym that's there. And then we have Reverend Gareth Phillips, uh, Reverend Paul McGregor, and Evangelist Fitzroy Edwards. Our musicians today, Reverend Delroy Webb and Anthony Drake, who are providing us with music. We have in our company also Costas Rotolorum, Iselin Golden, gracing us with our presence this morning. Uh, and we want to acknowledge her this morning and all the other ministers and the forum and in the audience, we welcome you most heartily. Continuing our program, we will be inviting Kiona Gaynor to come reading the first lesson from us, St. John 14, 1 to 6. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. That's where I am. There you may, there you may be also. And where I go, you know, and the way you know. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going, and how can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will now have 
Eulogy 1, the latter years, Jordania Lindsay, stepdaughter. Good morning, church. My daughter is not here just now. She has to be on the road. I want to take this opportunity to thank each and every one, family, friends, neighbors, community, colleagues all for being here this morning. This section of the eulogy It's just a summary that I'll be bringing of the lot of years of my husband, the Reverend Delroy Campbell, GP. I felt it important to do this because the eulogy will be coming to you, another portion of it will be coming to you later on in the service, but I felt compelled to speak to the years that I knew him. And so today, the life and the legacy of a warrior, a soldier, a servant of the Lord, the late Delroy, prophet, D.D., as he loves himself to be called, Campbell, Uncle Gigi. March 4, 2024. 3.04 a.m. The usual prayer, sweet hour of prayer, I come. What unknowingly was to be the last communal prayer that we would have had. The effectual question always of concern was asked, are you okay? This because he spent most of the nights watching over me. While I was sleeping, he watched, just to take note of anything that may happen because of the challenge that we have been dealing with for years. We prayed together. He prayed for me. Get another hour of sleep. He said, remember, you will be leaving early in the morning. And then a rapturous smile, a smile that goes beyond human comprehension, transformed his features. And I recall, as I doze off to sleep, what a beautiful smile. These were to be the final words to my ear from one whom has been my companion, confidant, partner in love, in ministry, my husband, my friend. Leaving home approximately 5.55 with the words, we'll talk later. A later that never was to be. On my appointment in Kingston, a fatal call came. We rushed back home. I questioned. I questioned God. I questioned the incident, what happened. Perhaps you reached for me and I wasn't there. 
You called for me, but I didn't hear. You looked for me, and I was nowhere. God called you home. You had to go. You answered, Lord, I'm coming home. The clarion call couldn't be ignored. The hand of God stretched out in love. He welcomed one more soldier home. A golden heart stopped beating. Are the working hands at rest? Yes, our hearts are broken. But my love, you did your very best. The scripture, 2 Timothy 4, 7 to 8. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of life, a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. The man, Reverend Delroy Campbell, and his mission. July 2009, July 24, mark the transitionary era of two lives entwined to become one. The Ministry of the Tabernacle of Praise International Ministries was birthed through this union to the glory of God ordained co-founder of the Jamaican chapter of the Tabernacle of Praise International Ministries on August 28, 2011. The official launch was held December 4, 2011. A graduate of the Life Bible College, which is the Lighthouse of International Foursquare Evangelism, graduating on June 6, 1978, his journey as a Sunday school teacher, a pastor, church planter, builder, national men's president, Bible college lecturer, board member, spanned 39 years in the International Church of the First Square Gospel in Jamaica. The mission at Barry was started out of the passion to bring the church to the people if the people would not come to the church. May 2006, the declaration was made on the spot of ground. Light is come to the community of Barry. The prospect of a church in this community was very dim and was viewed by many as an effort in futility because many others had come, started a work there, but so to speak, failed. The territorial emperors of the kingdom of darkness seemingly triumphant. 2 Corinthians 4.10 says, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Ephesians 6 verse 12, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. For this warrior of the cross, there would be no retreat and no surrender. The church pressed on. The church, a tabernacle of praise, is From one of his faithful daughters overseas, he said, she writes, it's hard to put into We had our fair share of debates, quarrels, disagreements, and fights. But by the next visit or phone call, we were good friends again. I can vividly remain for his lengthy conversations. You have fought, my brother, a good fight. Yes, you have finished your course. Yes, who depended on you to inspire them. Sleep on, my beloved. Take your rest. I will forever of February 
receive the leg fitted and begin to practice during the week to walk. Wanting to surprise the church, time for ministering had come. He stood up on two feet. Hallelujah! The church erupted in praise. And what a celebration it was. Because the man of God preached the word, encouraged the church to stand, went into Matthew chapter 25 and encouraged the church to observe and know the word, to not live like the five foolish virgins, but to be ready, waiting to meet our God. God has given me and God has answered all my prayers. And if God is ready for me, I am ready to go. Be ready waiting for the Lord is at hand. Psalms 34, which is we are going through when we have been through some storms is to encourage us to praise God like Paul and Silas did in prison during their trials, during their testings. And this psalm today from verse 1 through 10 reads, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. They looked unto him and were saints, for there is no want to them that fear him. The young lions lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord, God rest his soul. May light perpetual shine upon him, shine upon him the more detailed eulogy will be read later on thank you to lift up the name of jesus christ and to help sell in this homegoing celebration of our dear brother and fellow servant in the gospel the opportunity to have been a fellow sir god with pastor dear roy campbell JP, and in with you in this celebration of his legacy. Proclamation. Pastor Delroy Campbell, JP, to the Tabernacle of Praise International Ministry, Jamaica, and family. Great knowing there is no safer place to be than in the will of God. For the will of God will never take you in the only wise and almighty God. Whereas, according to this, his tender mercy, God, who is infinite on the promise that Isaiah 51 and 12 says, I, even I, for we entrust you to care and keep Roy, JP, on this day. May a copy of this church proclamation be given to the family and a copy will be recorded in our church archive. Right, ladies and gentlemen, we are going in, but I am asking for understanding and restraint. So, we are going to be having tribute from Barry Tabernacle of Praise, that's Jamaica, then from the Four Square Gospel Churches in Jamaica, the Reverend G. Phillips, immediate past president, and the Reverend R. Mullins. The Linstead Ministers Fraternal, the Reverend Denzel Jack, who is our chairman, work with all the churches across Bogwalk, Linstead, and Yurton. 
in a cohesive unit. We work together as a family, as a church. The church is one foundation. Amen? And then we are going to be having Mr. Livingston Lewin, Northwest St. Catherine Justices of the Peace Association. Please come in that order. Thank you very much. Reverend Garrett Phillips, I, we did not know at the time that our president would be here with us. And so our president is actually physically here. And so I am going to step to the side and invite Reverend Richard Davis, our current president, to do the tribute. And on the heels of which, I will just make one statement. To the Costas, Patelorium. Justices of the Peace, ministers on the platform, family, friends, well-wishers, good morning. As we gather here today to give thanks for the life of our dear brother, I am truly honored to be given an opportunity to pay tribute in honor of him. I must tell you, however, that if I tell you everything that I know about this man, it will take the rest of the af morning into afternoon. So on behalf of the International Church of the Four Square Gospel, Board of Directors and the church family, I would like to express our sincere condolences to his family, especially his wife, Reverend Elaine Campbell, his daughters, Lacey Ann and Kamisha, as you mourn the loss of your husband and father. I pray that the peace of God that passes all understanding will surround you always and grant you comfort as he alone can afford you. We are all saddened by his passing and share the grief of the reality that is no longer here. Reverend Campbell was no stranger to Foursquare, an organization to which he gave his time, experience, resources, and skills. He was a competent and skillful carpenter who took great pride in delivering nothing less than quality work and service. It should be noted that there are four square churches today that, ha that have and is still benefiting from his skills as a carpenter. He has made furniture for seating, doors, podiums that are still being used today that shows evidence of the quality of work he did. He was a person who believed that the gospel of Jesus Christ should be available and taught to everyone, no matter if you were young, old, wealthy, poor, or wherever you come from. He was a man that served without fear. He was not afraid of taking the gospel even to some of the most volatile areas in Western Kingston. This he did consistently for a number of years, which bore fruit as he seeks to fulfill God's mandate. His tenure with the International Church of the Four Square Gospel will not be forgotten due to the positive impact and legacy that he leaves 
with us. Reverend Campbell graduated from the Life Bible College in 1978, an institution he later gave of himself to become a lecturer, passing on the knowledge and wisdom to the younger generation. He has served as pastor of the Barry Church, national men's director, member of the board of directors. These capacities he had served in, on the highest level of distinction and great honor. Here are some attributes that can be accorded to this great man. He was a spiritual leader who was compassionate, empathetic, devoted, individual who exhibit unwavering faith. He was dedicated, available, committed, caring, sociable, dependable, loving, kind, just to name a few. We are saddened because we have lost a stalwart, a veteran who will be greatly missed. However, we can take comfort knowing that he's gone to a better place where there will be no more pain, no more suffering, no more sorrows, and our take. Revelation 14 verse 13 says, Then I heard a voice from heaven say, Write this, Blessed are the dead who died in the Lord from now on. Yes, says the Spirit, they will rest from their labor, for their deeds will follow them. As I close, family, I want to leave with you these three questions and one profound answer. The questions are, does Jesus care when my heart is pained? Too deeply for mirth or song, as the burden press and the cares distress and the way grows weary and long. Does Jesus care when I've tried and failed to resist some temptation strong? When for my deep grief there is no relief, though my tears flow all the night long? Does Jesus care when I've said goodbye to the dearest on earth to me? And my sad heart aches till it nearly breaks. Is it aught to him does he see? Here is the profound answer. Oh yes, he cares. I know he cares. His heart is touched with my grief. When the days are weary, the long nights dreary, I know my Savior cares. Reverend Delroy Campbell have fought a good fight. He has finished his course. And most of all, he has kept the faith. Well done, good and faithful servant. May his soul rest in peace. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Write, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them. Mm, sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer, may I thy consolation share till from Mount. celebrate a life and so I want to say all political reserve okay so my little tribute will title I remember when I remember 
Reverend Delroy Campbell, J.P. Delroy. As young people together in the early 70s, we served in the youth department. He started Bible college two years after I. <clears throat> and so we had a great bond where evangelism was concerned. Bible study, prayer meeting, Bible school never miss. I remember he was working at a place on Constant Spring Road. And this boss was a boss who you have time to come to work, but no time to leave. But he would leave because he got to be at Bible school by 6 o'clock. If you don't get there at 6 o'clock when Bible school starts, you'll be sitting in the class. For class starting a long time before you. And so he would always be there for, for Bible college, for his training. During that time, a lot of us as young people were placed in different areas. Reverend Mullins and myself, Wilfred, were sent to Newlands. But he started a work in Jonestown. At that time in the 70s, if anybody could remember, the tribal war, the political war that was taking place in Jonestown. But that never stopped Delroy. He started a work there. That work blossomed into the Tarrington Church now that still exists. At the time, as national youth leader, we would go every once a quarter, we would go to different churches and we would have met as youth together. His passion for evangelism was no joke about. So he had labored very hard. He had passion for souls. So let me go quickly as I can. During that time in the early 80s, he had left Foursquare Ministry for a while, and so he was occupying other ministry. When Reverend Wilfred Mullins became the first elected president in 2000, he returned full blast and was ready to work with us again all over. I remember at one stage as we were to go to Dominican Republic and our regional conference, Delroy went with us. It was the last time Air Jamaica went to DR. We were on that flight, stopping Haiti, and then going to DR. But only to be told that we wouldn't catch the same flight back because they were no longer going to Haiti. So here we were in DR, and Delroy, if you know Delroy, you know him well, he would make, take everything for a joke. That didn't deter him at all. So... Brother Mullins and I had a visa to go through the state to come back. But this time he had no visa. So he had a great joke by going to Pastor Joseph in Grenada, invited him over. So in order to get back to Jamaica, he had to get the late flight that would end up taking him into Grenada. And from Grenada, he would get the Air Jamaica back to Jamaica. And we reached Jamaica before and he says, Ha. You know, go on. You know why? Me a girl, Grenada. <laughs> it was fun for him. He had a great time with the brethren in Grenada. He had served in many areas, as, as it was said before, of his carpentry work was second to none. He had done, and he took great pride in what he had done. And we had labored together over the years. And continue as not just colleagues, but as friends. Because all of us during that era remain as friends. Not just as brethren, but we remain as friends. And so we thank God for his life. And uh, many of them you will hear from there. But that's my part. I remember when. It come to the time now that he has to go. And he was ready. I believe he was ready. The question I'll ask you, are you ready? And I'll just leave this song. I won't take too long. Sorry. I know the time. I won't talk very long. Not to? Well, get ready today. Because we're pulling out tomorrow. Okay? We are pulling out tomorrow. He's going to see all the loved ones who had gone on before. But one thing I can tell you, be ready today. Thank you so much.
All protocol has already been observed, so in the interest of time, I will just proceed with the tribute from the Linstead Ministers Fraternal, of which our late Pastor Camber and his wife have been an integral part for many, many years. I believe that in every generation, God raises up men and women to be servant leaders in his church. If you read the Bible, these include some gifted messengers, such as men as Moses, Samuel, Elijah, Elisha, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, John the Baptist, and the Apostle Paul, and we could go on. Pastor Camber was one such person who gave himself tirelessly to carry out the work of God in the ministry of his church. He was faithful even to the end. You ask yourself the question, who is a faithful servant? A faithful servant is one who loves his heavenly father and strives to follow Jesus. This means that when he makes choices of what to do in life, he chooses what Jesus would choose and go where Jesus would go. Pastor Campbell was a man on a mission for his master. It is evident that one of the statements of faith, one of the statements of faith was wherever he leads, I will go. And his faith journey took him to the district of Barry, a deep rural area without much glamour. No limelight, but record shows that he served faithfully and indeed may those who come behind him find him faithful as he has left a legacy of influence in the work that he has done in that community. I have been pastoring and one of the churches I, I pastor um, is close to that vicinity. And I remember when Pastor Campbell was going, we, we spoke, and I said, I respect your faith because you are venturing into a deep area where you do not have a large population. And uh, you would say, as I think I heard earlier, that the prospect for growth is not that favorable. And Pastor Camber's comment to me then was, even if there is one person there, it is worth going. I admire that faith. I could see him some Sundays when I was traversing, traveling in his van, picking up people, making sure that everybody gets to church. A faithful servant who did not act in a way that suggests that he is superior to others, but was always umber and did not put his needs above the needs of others, thus patterning Christ's selfless ministry in that he came not to be served, but to serve. And isn't that what we see? I've never had a conversation with him and he was not seeking something in order to uplift the lives of those he served. And every time that Pastor Campbell heard that I got a supply of Bible, he would leave a message on my phone if he did not get through to me and said, remember my own, I'm coming for it. And the last supply I gave was to his wife. 
at a fraternal public meeting. Such was a man love for ministry. What do we take away from this man's life? It's simple. God wants our availability more than our ability. If you don't remember anything, you remember that today. God wants our availability more than our ability. We can learn from this man. God makes us faithful servants through trials that we may learn the value of a waiting season. And you and I know about the challenges that Pastor Cameron encountered. I can speak about his formative years, but this did not damper his faith. He was a man who was, I call him a man on fire for the work of Christ. But I don't know how many of you know about this, and I just say this and close. Pastor Campbell was also an excellent builder. If you know about his prowess that was spoken about with his craft in woodwork, I think that is second to none. Years ago, when I was um, moving into my house, I wanted a special door. And I said, who could build a door that size and what I wanted? And Pastor King pointed me to Pastor Cambry. He said, one man I know can build it. And Pastor Cambry came, measured, built that door. And that door stands at a monument. Everybody that comes to the house for the first time, the first thing they admire is the beautiful work that has been done on that door. And when he was building that door, Pastor Campbell said something to me that will never leave me. He said that it's not so much about the money. That is secondary. The primary thing is about the quality of the job that I will do. It speaks volume of this man. He was a true kingdom builder. A man who was given so much of himself to the work of Christ. The Linston Ministers Fraternal, of which several pastors are present here today, and many have sent their own condolence. We stand with you, Sister Camber, in this time of bereavement, and we say to you that our love and our support continues, and we pray that God's strength will continue to enable you. God bless you. Justice Lowen. All right, seems as if Justice Lowen is not present. We want to thank God for the tributes offered. Um, Tabernacle of Praise, Four Square Churches in Jamaica and the Linstead Ministers Fraternal. Can we shout a shout of praise in the house? Amen. All right, so we will move along and we'll invite Sister Abigail Higgins to come with the reading of the second lesson taken from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 1 through 10. Good morning, everyone. The second reading will be taken from 2 Corinthians 5, reading from verse 1 to 10, and it reads, For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan, earnestly, desiring to be clothed upon with our house which is from heaven. 
If so, be that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. For we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened, not for that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon, that mortality might be swallowed up of life. Now he that hath wrought us for the selfsame thing is God, who also hath given unto us the earnest of the Spirit. Therefore we are always confident, knowing that whilst we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Wherefore, we labor that, whether present or absent, we may be accepted of him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body, according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We give God praise for his words. For the entrance of his words brings life. We are going into the second set of tributes. And as we invite the persons to offer their tributes, we ask that we bear in mind the time, three minutes per tribute. So we are going to be inviting Mrs. Lacey Ann Campbell Brown, daughter, the St. Catherine Forage Clubs, PAC Leaders Association, Minister Marva Mendes Brown, family friend, the Reverend Raphael My Myers, JP, representing the Nutshell community and the Church of the Foursquare Gospel Orange Field. Please come in that order. Thank you. Hello? Okay. Good morning, everyone. Bless you all, and thanks for coming and offering your support in this very difficult time. I am the proud number one that is firstborn. In deciding on a tribute today, I opted to go with one of the last advices he gave me, which was to speak. So of course, being my father's daughter, as I like to say, I decided to share with you a few lessons garnered from his life that I hope will help us fulfill our God-given work and to be faithful in our life to the end as he was. So here goes. I want you to understand that life is a journey and you are in training. So how you start out is not how you have to finish. Daddy was rough and stern sometimes as most would describe him from the past. And I understand that under the upbringing of his stepdad, he had very little choice to be otherwise. <laughs> but this was all based on principles. Daddy did make a full 360 to become calmer more understanding and patient enough to listen to the gibberish from his granddaughters. I say that to say, don't be quick to judge and chastise others, as we all have different backgrounds and upbringing, so operate from a place of love and appreciation. Offer value to others and forgive quickly. Remember, no one is perfect. Lesson number one, always be a student. Daddy often told me how he didn't get a full education, yet you couldn't guess it from speaking to him. He told me that he taught himself to read properly, and he would listen to the radio and take notes of words he didn't know. Look up the meaning, and he made sure to use them until they stuck. He would make sure to share them with me. His recent one was eschatology, which is the study of biblical prophecy. 
or how he would be discussing the meaning and signs of this past solar eclipse with me. That he would also rise early in the mornings to pray and meditate on the word, as you don't just want knowledge, but you need wisdom. So I encourage you to always be learning and know that life is always teaching. Instead of asking why things happen to me, ask why they happen for you. Growing up for us, we were well taken care of. So much so that in my early teenage years, I still didn't know what bills were, as they were always just taken care of. So there was no mention or discussion surrounding bills. However, what I remember most is going to church and having our family devotions, which instilled in us, including our cousins, the fear of the Lord. That he didn't get everything right, indeed, for he can't be blunt and harsh in his approach, but what he did do is set an example of what a good man should be, one who takes care of his family. I remember when I was in primary school and I, I would go to, go to class and there was always an issue with the desk or my seating and he made a desk for me that I have up until this day, which of course I'll pass down to his granddaughters. Okay. All right. Statistics show that 86% of households in which the father is a servant of God usually results in the family also becoming believers. So men, I encourage you, to make sure you don't focus just on financial and physical provision only. You should represent spiritually too, especially these days, for what can we achieve without the Lord? The lesson here is that your family is the first ministry. Daddy was very independent. He always told me that the Campbells are self-sufficient. He, he always had a backup plan. He had his goals, his vision, and he planned his execution, and what was amazing about it was that he even planned for the hiccups along the way. As a matter of fact, if he couldn't see his way out himself, he wouldn't take it on. So make the most of what you got. You can't control the cards you are dealt, but you can control how you play the game. Be grateful in all things. Be your own cheerleader. Be your own hero and take care of your number one. And for the record, your number one is you. <sighs> Lesson number four, make your word your bond. This, I realize, is a trait held by good, responsible men. Back in the day, a contract was sealed verbally, and so it is no surprise that older men tend to practice this habit. This is also a biblical principle. What comes out of the mouth defiles you, life and death is in the power of the tongue. This is actually part of the formula to success. It's not just keeping your word to others, but also the ones you keep to yourself. The fact that daddy did everything he said and achieved his goals should be no surprise. For keeping his word to himself first, he employed. I remember a lot of conversations in the past that we would have. Often to, he would say to me, Lacey, I can't follow what you say. You're lying to me. And I would say, but I don't. But I later realized that if I'm not doing as I say, then this is indeed a lie. So now I know better and I do better. And this has resulted in growth and progress. So if I'm not sure if I can fulfill my word, I simply keep silent. So work on you more than you do anything else. This is how you will have success. Lesson number five, your vision belongs to you. All of us were given dreams and aspirations. As children, we had a wild imagination. And as we got older, we tend to lose all that. We do this backwards. We tend to increase, we should be increasing our reality to match our dreams rather than shrinking our dreams to match our reality. Daddy was a realist and gave practical advice, but a visionary he truly was. He had a dream of living in the hills with a space to do his little garden, and in keeping his dream in front, 
and in keeping his dream in front of him, this manifested. Even his church, Tabernacle of Praise, manifested in the same fashion. When he started, all you could see was trees and bush. Everyone asked, why here? Why would you come here? It doesn't make sense. But daddy knew that the vision was given to him and no one else. So when you have dreams and goals, don't go sharing it with everyone. Remember, Joseph shared his dreams and was mocked and ridiculed. Hold your goals tightly. Stay in your lane. Be committed and focus until your work is complete. Lesson number six. Living healthy is godly. Regrettably, I lost both parents within a span of 14 months and 21 days. They both succumbed to lifestyle illnesses. The number one reason for death in the world is due to lifestyle illnesses. This journey, however, was how my mission was given to me because I realized that weak bodies do not win spiritual battles. Health is not spoken about often enough in the church. And so we succumb to our lifestyle and we get sick and unfortunately we die. In your mission in serving God, you have to not just be fit for purpose, but fit to finish. When you look on the life of David, we often say God doesn't look on the outward appearance, he looks at the heart. But we focus on just the heart, which is integrity. And most of us are fit for purpose. But because of our lifestyle habits, we are not fit to finish. So I remind you, living healthy is godly. Take care of your temple. And the last lesson that I will share is that you don't have a lot of time. Later is promised to no one. We like to say that tomorrow is not, present, not promised to anyone, but I will say that daddy woke up Monday, March 4th, and he did not live to see it later. He left us with Matthew 25, which states about the 10 virgins. And I want to share and highlight that all 10 virgins were righteous but you can be righteous and foolish. So ensure that you spend time with God and build your relationship with him. That is how you will have oil in your lamp to make it through the door. Live full and die empty. Again, from Matthew 25, God gave each of us talents. He gave each of us gifts. Are you fulfilling your purpose? Are you fulfilling the work he has called you to? He gave talents, and there was one that did nothing with it. And because of that, he did not hear the words, well done, my good and faithful servant. So I beg you today, in honor of my father, in honor of my father, when you go out, ensure that you fulfill your ministry. Your ministry could be to one, it could be to your son, it could be to your daughter. It could be that you are called to elevate your child so that your child will go out and reach millions. Let us work today to hear the words, well done, my good and faithful servant, as my daddy did. Thank you. Thank you very much. I can invite the other persons to come in order they will call. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Greetings. Ministers of the clergy, I am Donovan Edwards, the immediate past president for the St. Catherine Courage Club, and we have the executives of the Courage Club. I want to take this time to recognize the Reverend Roy, Roy Wickham, president for the Island Advisory Council. I'm going to ask all of the executive members and the 
volunteers of the St. Catherine Forage Club and the Jamaica Forage Club to stand at this time. All right. I came to know Reverend Royal Bickham through his wife, Mrs. Campbell, immediate parish manager for the St. Catherine Forage Club. And through my interaction with Mrs. Campbell, I realized that her husband plays a very integral role in the life of the Jamaica Forage Club, and in particular, the St. Catherine Forage Club. He has given her tremendous support during her services as the parish manager. I can remember meeting up with Mrs. Campbell at various schools at different locations within the parish of St. Catherine, and her husband was also there with her, giving her the support. I remember when Mrs. Campbell, uh, in 2018, there about when she recovered from surgery, and she was told not to drive, and her husband became her designated driver, and he took her right across the parish uh, to execute the work of the St. Catherine Forage Club. And as such, as forage, foragers, we are truly grateful and appreciative of the life of Reverend Roy Campbell. And as such, we are here to give support and in solidarity of Mrs. Campbell and the rest of the bereaved family. At this time, we have members of the executive of the St. Catherine Leader, Leaders Association that is going to give a tribute in song. Being led by the current president. Sometimes in our lives, we all 
just want you to know that we'll always be here for you. You have been a wonderful and amazing human being, and we love you dearly. All right, thank you. Good morning, brothers and sisters. On behalf of my family and the Sligoville Ollie School family, sincere condolences to Elaine and her family. I'll say this, I know Rev can't hear, but there's a place up there for people like him. Amen? And for us, for us, ensure that we are not getting ready, but we are ready, waiting. If you give a little more than you give, If you give a little more than you give And if you try to fix more than you break And if you're the kind who takes the time to help a stranger in the rain There's a place for people like If you stand up for those down on their knees And lend a voice to those who cannot speak If you shine a little light Give sight to the ones who've lost the way There's a place for people like you I've heard of made of gold, yes. and when you get there, there's a hand to hold, I believe when your days down here are through, there's a place out there for people like you, if you walk around with your hearts on your Try to change you want to see. If you lay down your life for love for someone to say, there's a place for people like you. I've heard up there the streets are made of gold. I've heard you out there to keep doing what you 
for the officiating ministers, other colleagues in ministry, my brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. I want to take the opportunity today to, on the behalf of my immediate family, my church family, the Church of God of Prophecy, Yurton, friends, and community persons of a nutshell, we, we convey our condolences to the family of our deceased brother, and we join together in saying to all of you that you can still cast your cares on Jesus Christ because he cares for you. Praise the Lord. And I do this song on the behalf of all of us who I represent. There's a line that is drawn through the ages. On that line was the whole rugged cross. It was on that same line the battle was raging for the gain of man's soul for his own and the hurt shook in the midst of the temple oh Lord oh the sun Refused to shine. Mm -hmm. It was there they had God's sword in battle, and then in the darkness he cried. Oh, it is. The battle is over. It is finished. There will be no more war. Oh, it is finished. The hand of the conflict. Mm -hmm. It is finished. Jesus, he is Lord. Yet in my heart, the battle is raging. Oh Lord, not all the prisoners of war have come home. No, 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 no. They were but a few. That the war had been won, but then I heard that the king of all ages he has won the battle for me. Oh, yes, he did. Oh. Battle is over. 
praise God. And Jesus, he is Lord. Yet in my heart, the battle is raging. Not all the prisoners of war have come home. No, 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 because they were battlefields. My heart wanna make it. Oh Lord, for I did not know that the war had been won. But then I heard that the King of all ages. Hallelujah. Oh yes, he has won, praise God, the battle for me and you. They were victory in your making, oh Lord. And now, with the saints, you have been set free. Battle is over. It is finished. There will be no more war. Oh, it is finished. The end of the conflict. Oh, it is finished. Hallelujah. It is finished, and Jesus he is Lord. Jesus he is Lord. Hallelujah. and praise them as the group comes. Go ahead and give God praise. Hallelujah.
Can we continue to praise God? Our brother has gone home and we are on our way home. Because all of us are on a journey. A journey from the womb to the tomb. Amen. And then we go home. Praise God. Now, we are going to be having the second lesson to be read by Mrs. George Dana Matney, a stepdaughter, then followed by the tribute from Exodus Funeral Services. We are pleading with you folks, those of you who will come, to be conscious. The sky outside don't look too bright. And those of us who live in this valley knows that when it turns midday and after, we are likely to be blessed. Amen? And so we plead with you, when those two items are finished, Evangelist Fitzroy Edwards will lead us through the rest of the proceedings. Thank you very much. Good morning again, everyone. Our scripture reading will be taken from Revelations 22, and we will be reading from verses 1 to 12. And the issue a poor river of water of life clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river, was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits, and yielded her fruits every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and the Lamb shall be in it, and his servant shall serve him. And they shall see his face, and his name shall be in their And there shall be no night there, and there, and they need no candle, neither light of the sun, for the Lord God giveth them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. And he said unto me, These sayings are faithful and true. And the Lord God of the holy prophets sent his angel to show unto us, unto his servants, the things which must shortly be done. Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keepeth the saying of the prophecy of this book. And I, John, saw these things and heard them. And when I heard and and when I had heard and seen, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel which showed me these things. Then said he unto me, See thou do it not, for I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren the prophet, and of them which keep the saying of this book, worship God. And he saith unto me, Seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. Twelve and last we, Twelve and last we read together. And, and behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give every man according to his word shall be. Here, in the reading of God's holy word, we say, thanks be to God. You are who you are yesterday, today, and forevermore. What you say is what you do.
good afternoon, everyone. At this time, I would like to ask Mrs. Campbell to come. Goodbyes are not forever. Goodbyes are not the end. It simply means we'll miss you until we meet again. On behalf of Exodus Funeral Services, I would like to say thank you. Thank you for entrusting the final care of your husband to us, as we at Exodus knows it is never easy losing a loved one. Thank you. a shout of praise. Come on, praise him one more time. Come on, Reverend Campbell would want to hear we praise God. Come on, somebody, just give him another praise. His only person I don't expect to send a praise is Reverend Delroy Campbell, but let everything that I've brought give the Lord a shout of praise. I have heard my minister colleagues sing and I thought I would hear some more shout of hallelujah. Come on, somebody, give the Lord a shout of praise. Come on, give him another praise, somebody. We want to work with the time. Amen. And we realize and know that the time is very hot. Amen, somebody. And then maybe we get some showers. So we want to make sure our colleague like to rest nicely. Amen. He's a man, Reverend Campbell. Is a parable, man. Full of parable. Come on, somebody. And him just say something. Oh, Lord Jesus, have mercy. I don't know about you, but I know he touched my life. And let me say this and call the few items that I have here. When I started my house, Reverend Delroy Campbell said to me, I'm going to give you a door. And uh, I was there waiting on the door until he drive the door to Springvale where I live and take the door to us. When he bring the door, is a huge door. Amen. And I don't dream then I would have a house that need that big door with two dummy at the side. So we scrap those doors to fit in our little place that we have. And standing here today, I realized that he had a vision. Today, I had to go back now to buy one of those huge doors. Amen to place in that house. Meaning that, amen, he have caught the vision that I did not see. Somebody give the Lord a praise here. Amen, church of the living God. We're going to do it nice and easy and I'm going to ask you to continue to work with the timing. Amen. It best you cut it shorter than go taller. Amen. And I'm very short so I'm going to get up, speak up and sit down. Amen. At this time we will have remembrance. And this will be done by Mervyn Campbell of his sister and Sharon Simit Peer sister. Come in this order as you do so in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. but God understand. You wouldn't know the relationship that my brother and I share because we call each other so often. Even on the 26th of February, he said to me, he called me one mo in the morning and said, Nerva. No, he said, Ava. I was waiting on this call so long and I didn't get it, so I have to call you. Didn't know that because he talked to me the week before. So I don't know what he was talking about. Anyway, he said, but I know it was election, so he wanted me to chat politics with him, because I love to chat politics. <laughs> anyway, I'm here to give the remembrance. 
Growing up as children, we, born, we were born in Hanover. He was born in Westmoreland, that's a bigger one, to our mother. Then we come to Hanover. And uh, after years, my father migrated to England. So you know this train that left on the mother. And then my mother come to Saint, went to St. Elizabeth to live with the rest of us. And uh, from there, you know, then I went to Carmel all age school. And then after school, he went to do this carpenter. But growing up as a young man, Delroy always portrayed his Christ-like behavior because that's the way our parents grow us. We couldn't fool, you know. And my mother would wake us up wee hours in the morning to stay around the bedside and to have prayer because my mother have the gift of, what do you call it, revival. That's what she is. She have that gift, so she will come and tell you something. And believe me, it's going to happen. So that's the way we were raised. So as I said, train up a child in the way he should grow. And when he become old, he will not depart from it. And Delroy always portrayed. His, his peers would look up to him, you know. So, and then we were going to Moravian church then as children. Because we didn't have, you know, those we Pentecostal church there. And then after leaving school, he went to Kingston to live with Uncle George and his wife and there he continued his, his um, carpentry. Which he did a, did a good job. That was his dream and passion. And I would ask my brother to make furniture for me. You know, but we still have to pay him. But he will not charge me the way he would charge others. Because if you come in my house now, my kitchen cabinet, my kitchen cupboard, my bed, my what not, or then call it what's it not, or whatever. You know, all of those things, my brother. I remember when I just started out to live, you know on my own, and I had a bed that I got, and the bed, I never knew it was so delicate, and I jumped down in the bed and I hear bow, break it, break in two, and I went down to Oakland Crescent where he was living, and I said, Gigi, my bed broke up, you know, me now have no bed, and he make a bed for me, right now I have that bed that my grandchildren sleep on, you know, they are, well, they are not longer in Jamaica, I have the bed and I have the little dresser, I think it was $280, I pay for that dresser, and I have it all now. You know, as, that's how we live, me and Delroy. It was me, Delroy, and Leonie. And me tell you, when I lost Leonie, my bigger sister, it was something else, me tell you. And now Delroy gone, boy, I mean, I know. I mean, I know, because sometime in the morning, sometime I get up, I might run on him to call him and say, eh, you no longer here. But as, as children growing up, he was such a good fellow. I remember one Sunday, Daddy said, nobody must go and play cricket on a Sunday. Because when daddy's at home, everybody have to stay put. That was our stepfather. And he and George, that the second and third, then went around the road and went and played football. Huh? They didn't come home in the night. Early. And daddy said, no one must get up and open the door for them. But me bad. Me get up and open the door for him. And that in that night, oh, God, I get a whap in that night. And they never went back to play any ball, you know. So, <laughs> anyway. And then now, coming to Kingston, and then I came to Kingston to live. And so, I was dependent on him, you know, finance me like that. And when we're going back home in the country, he always have a van. Because he do the carpentry work, he have a van. And tell me now, when him going to country and we fill up in that van, he take every corner, turn straight. And it would be fun for us to go down. And then everybody him saw on the road, or see on the road, he would stop and build conversation. Him don't know them, you know? And build conversation with them. That's how he lives, a jovial fellow. Very jovial. And then now, after that, I remember days gone by, days gone by, he would drop by and said, Nervo, what are going on? You know, even when I have this accident in 2008 when our cousin died in Hanover, and they came up the sun, the sun, the Saturday evening. I didn't come up the Saturday evening. I came up the Sunday because I didn't want to drive that late coming up. And when I reached out to that big hotel, they, they call Palladium. I don't know what happened. My vehicle overturned with nine family members in there. My brother, my, my daughter, my grandchild, and my cousin. So that's what gave me the, the spine problem here now. And Delroy was so, when, I, when they called him and tell him that I crashed, I could tell you how he felt. And he came by, I was down by Montego Bay in the hospital. I had to admit because the arm had rolled, rubbed off on the asphalt, so it grew big, big, big. 
So I had to sustain there. But when I came home, he came by the house and I could see it on his face that he was feeling because I could die. Because the van rolled over and over and like somebody put it back on the four wheel coming from Lucy. And I said, thank you, Jesus. Even when I reach home back, I said, God, I shall not die, but I shall live to declare the work of God. And growing up, you know, Delroy, I always call. Sometimes, even since my daughter migrated, he would call me and he would say, Nerva, how is scary? And I have to tell him because I have to report to him about the family because I am the reporter. And I would tell him, and he would pray, always praying for us, always. Sometimes we would go in Kingston and he would call and say, Nerva, me going to town, me passing by. Where are you? He said, me at home or me on the road. If he would come to Spanish town, he would call. And he and Sister Elaine would stop by, but he not going to leave my home until he prayed for us. Never, ever, always praying for us. No. And you know, GG occupation, um, they, what they call it there, them love to go fishing. My brother love fishing. Yeah, he and George and Danny, them always go like when water come down in New Market, to give it, mix it up. When water came down in New Market, and it, you know, they, they, them always, they, all the holes they meet. So when it draw, there's a lot of perch. Lot of perch there. So they would go and they would fish in and come home and we would eat fish, we would eat fish, we would eat a lot of fish, or they go bird hunting and they come. I would be the one to roast the bird, you know, and to go to them. Yeah, that was our lifestyle as children growing up because we, we couldn't keep company or we didn't go anywhere to say, we we'll go party. Or, no, we couldn't do that. Our stepfather would never allow us to go to those places. And if, I remember even 99 when our father. I went to England, my sister and myself first, went to England to visit our father, and then we spent two, two months with him, and came back, and just as we came back, I me tell him, say, me, me not coming back at this place because the flight too long. Three weeks after I got back, my church sister called me and said, Nerva, your father passed. Me said, Jesus, God, I want this now, and me have to come. Me said, me, I have to go back to the place here again. Me now have to go back with Delroy and Danny. Because through me, no one know the runnings. Me have to go with them. When we reach airport and going through immigration, the immigration lady said, I can't say, so you're the mother, you know. You are the one who carry the passport. And it was fun for us there, you know. And even coming back, our flights had delayed. And they had to put us up into an all-inclusive. Me and Delroy and, and Danny get down in the food, you know. And we eat, and eat. All, when, uh, put all of us in one room. It was fun for us as children growing up. You know, because Denver is a jovial person. And, you know, I admire him for that, really and truly. He always, always called to check up on us. And if you don't hear me call him, because sometimes really, he said, eh, eh, you have to go call me, big brother. And I call him, and I say, hey, Mr. Kianlo, what's going on with big brother? And he said, talk to me, talk to me. He only want to hear what's going on now, you know. So I say, all right, everybody, all right. So I have to give him a load on everything, and he will keep more, ask more carry, and the children, them, and family members. But I noticed in these latter weeks or months, he's at home, now he call everybody. Some people may hear him tell me, saying, call, I don't know how he find them, because some of them is his schoolmates, and so I don't know how he find them, but he call them. He called them and talked to them, even the last time he said, never, I was talking to Polly, you know, how the heavens in, in find Polly? He said, talk to Polly yesterday, that was the Monday when it was election day. And he talk and him chat and chat. And me and him chat and we chat politics in a man, because he loved to call me. So when he said, oh, I have to call my um. one little sister. And he said, he said, me say, say, one little sister. After, me, after I'm not the only sister, he said, Nerva, you know, Patsy, I've got to talk things, we've gone a long time. You never, never, not, never, not can talk, can't show you, Alvin. But me now, to me, chat the politics with him. Oh, yeah. All right. You know, what's that's Delroy? Yeah? But when I saw that morning when, this, when the text come up and say, Daddy is gone. Oh, Lord Jesus. It's like peace of me went with him. You know, I really miss my brother. I really miss him. But sleep on my brother. Sleep yeah. on. Okay. Thank you. Bless you. Bless you, mom. Bless you. Bless you. Everybody. My name is Sharon Smith Pierce. I'm the sister-in-law of Pastor Campbell. There is so much to say, 
remembering Brother Campbell is my name for him, and he called me Sister Smith. But Cam wouldn't give it time to say everything. I remember, I'm going to start here, I remember I was living in Baal District, and, and to occasion, I was going to church that Sunday morning. I remember one time I was going to Makatree, Fort Square, standing at the corner, and he came and said, where are you going? I said, I'm going to Makatree, I'm just looking up right to go. So he said he was going to Bullock Mountain. And another occasion I was going to church in um, Hitson Town. And he came and stopped and said, well, I'm going to Bullock Mountain because at that time he was acting pastor at Bullock Mountain Four Square Church. And he traveled from Red Hills, so he had to come to Kitson Town. Anyway, I start going with him to Bullock Mountain. Going to Bullock Mountain, we have to go to a district named Barry. You, we used to stop and encourage people to come to Barry with us, to come to Bullock Mountain Church, you know, because there was no church in Barry. Anyway, on some occasion, we get some people to follow us. One day he said, well, he can't get the people to go to church with him, so he's going to bring the church to the people. So we started Sunday school under a Aki tree before there was a shop. And there was two Aki tree across the road, so we started Sunday school there. Usually leave us there. We had another sister named Sister Julian to keep Sunday school. And when he coming back from Bullock Mountain, he would pick us up. Then some young men come and say there was a church up at the crossing, so he could find the man and see if he could get that spot. I remember one Sunday morning, he go up there and say he's going to pray and claim the spot so we can get it to start a church there. Anyway, we were once there praying. I remember he was repeating the scripture that the city that sit in darkness, great light has come. And some other brethren come and see him there praying and they come and they pray and they say they are claiming the spot. After that, we started church there under a tent. We used to put up a tent and we started church there. And by this time, Sister Julie used to carry some other children from Spanish Town when we were there. When the rain fall every Sunday morning, when rain fall very often in Barry, then they used to have to push off the water before, push off water before we started church. So anyway, when we started by, like Saturday, he would pick up some of us brethren and we go up there and start digging on the place for, um, to build the church. So I remember a major the church, and he always say he built the church. He started building the church in his shop because he take a measurement, go into his shop, cut the wood, then he come and frame out the church. But you know, we have very much wonderful time going to Barry, especially on Sunday, and you know, riding. He would drive around, pick up people. We would go out, and he witnessed the people. And I remember we used to go inviting people. They say they would come to church. But when he goes to the, pick them up, he wouldn't find anybody. Till afterward, we were understanding what happened. He got a call one day saying they wanted to come pray for somebody. Some children were sick. When we went there, I remember that, that he called me and said, Sister Smith, I want to go pray for somebody. When we went to this lady, we found out that that was one of the houses that we used to go, and they used to run and hide. Anyway, <coughs> that time, <laughs> okay, afterward, but to say this, after we go and pray for that lady, they end up being a member of the Barry Church, okay? And until today, days, we know that the church built from, it, it's so much to say, but I don't have time, but... I am telling you, Brother Campbell is a man, half, he's a kingdom builder. He, he's a fisherman, fishing men for the kingdom of God. And I pray that, you know, Amen. I know his soul will find rest. Amen. Because he has finished his course, right? And laid up for him in glory. <laughs> Amen. That where his soul rests in peace. God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. Give the Lord a praise still, no? Come on, give him a praise again. All right, just before, 
just before our sister share, there is a field of car, license number 1558, KT blocking somebody, so we ask that you will remove. Thank you, Madam Aileen, out of England, and is a niece, and she want to go ahead there. Okay, afternoon, everyone. Sorry, I wasn't sure if I would have been able to make it um, to the ceremony, so that's why my name isn't in the program. But I am Patrice. I grew up with Lacey and Kimisha Raymond. I'm my two brothers. We basically lived together up Cooper's Hill. And the uh, uncle was integral in, uh, in my upbring upbringing, right? He, he actually gave me my first summer job while he was at, uh, his workshop was at Clays of Jamaica off of Mullines Road. They didn't do much, but he paid me, so I was happy for that. And uh, as, uh, as everybody mentioned, he was a good carpenter. He always used to tell me that those decks that I saw at PwC, PricewaterhouseCoopers, he's the one that made them. And when I was there to, what, 2021, those decks were still there. He also built the decks that are, that are in Jamaica Conference Center. So if anyone has ever been to Jamaica Conference Center, those decks that you see in Parliament, that's... That was built by uncle as well. Um, sorry. He, he, as Lacey said, he is blunt at times, but uh, and when he says no, you can just circle back and then you will say yes when you ask him anything. I remember he, he always had a pickup truck, but then at a point in time, he realized that the pickup truck wasn't... Uh, um, convenient enough to transport his uh, church members back and forth to church. So that's when he purchased his first minivan. And since then, I think he always owned a minivan. And that was just to assist persons, to ensure that persons get to church. So, oh, sorry. That's one of the things I remember about him. He was the one that always tried to when we have to go to school, assist us with either dropping off us at the nearest point to school, just to ensure that um, it was a way of assisting us in uh, when we are growing up. Every time I speak to uncle, the main thing, I can't come off the phone without him asking, so when, are you, when am I going to give my life to Christ? And I must say, no, yeah, I must say that uh, the Sunday before he passed, I actually made that decision, and, and I was not able to tell him, but I'm sure that he knows now, so um, at least, yes, I made that step, and I'm happy for that, so I won't take up the time since I wasn't scheduled. Um, oh, his grand, um, granddaughter would like to sing Just a Line in Amazing Grace. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Good job. Thank you. I'm going to ask everybody to stand and sing this same song. Come on, Amazing Grace. Come on, somebody. We're going to sing it out. Amen.
Somebody shout hallelujah. Come on, give the Lord another shout of praise. Somebody shout hallelujah. Oh Lord, sit down servants. Hallelujah. I have the opportunity to go to some funerals where we had some gunmen died. And at certain time, they had gun salute. Oh, Lord Jesus. Amen. We have our soldiers die and we have gun salute. Our police officers, we have gun salute. A man of God has gone home and I wish I have a church. I wish I have some people that are ready to praise God. Somebody open your mouth and give the Lord a shout of praise. Hallelujah. Oh, I wish somebody understand what it meant to praise God. Hallelujah. Oh, God, I feel a praise in coming. I feel a praise in. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus, sit down, servants. Reverend Elaine Campbell, I saw Brother Robert Johnson few months ago before I leave the island. I mean, I was, I drive and we're passing Barry when he pulled me over. And there is some work that he said, Reverend Edwards, I want to accomplish these work before I gone home. And uh, I listened to Robert in the red that called me up and said, listen to me, I'm going to give him some days. I mean the Thursday, but he died before the Thursday. But let me tell you something. We're going to take on the button. And we're going to finish what he have left. I wish somebody give the Lord a praise here. Hallelujah. Reverend Stanley. England. Minister Ermin Gale. Come in this order. With the two last tribute. Amen. That sound good. That sound good. What a good God. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Hallelujah. Bless each and every one. We're here today to lift up the name of Jesus Christ, first and foremost. I want to thank God for the woman and man of God. It's because of him today that we are here. And we have a hope in Jesus Christ, you know. And I know Pastor Campbell very well. He's a upright man, a man that tells you just as it is. There's no if nor buts. And someone says, Pastor Campbell, speak in parable, and don't I know it? Hallelujah. There was a time I was speaking with pa um, Pastor Campbell, and I said, Pastor, to be quite honest, I don't understand what you what you saying to me. Can you make it more plainer? And you know, he's gracious enough to break it down for us. You know, just to stand here and to give honor to, you know, Sister Campbell, it's a privilege and a woman of strength, a woman of substance, a woman of integrity. Why? Because she had a husband who set the place. And I'm sure she already had it in her before. So to the children and the family, we say thank you. He may be gone but not forgotten. And we will meet someday. In Jesus' name, the Lord bless you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Give the Lord another shout of praise. Oh, Lord Jesus. song for her because she says she don't have the strength to do it so I'm going to do it so on behalf of the grieving family I extend to you my deepest sympathy grieve not because it is natural to grieve because Jesus weep at the tomb of Lazarus why should I feel this courage why should I show
Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Somebody give the Lord a praise. Somebody give him a praise. Oh my God. There's a feel of car that blocking somebody on the outside. Your license plate number is 1558KT. Please, I'm asking you to remove that car so persons can get to leave. Thank you so much. Thanks so much. We are reaching to a very, coming down to very important parts of the service. And most people only come to funeral to listen to this part. But if I was the organizer of the program, I would have uh, released the preacher a long time and then we have all of them things down the line. Amen. So maybe we have to look at it in another way. Amen, somebody. I love when the preacher preach a word. Amen. Because most people only want to listen to the eulogy and after the eulogy you leave. But I'm asking you please to sit down and listen to the word of God. At this time we will now have the eulogy. Amen. And this will be read by Kamisha Campbell Douglas, daughter. Put your hands together and make her welcome as she read. Good afternoon, everyone. We are here today to honor and celebrate the life of Delroy Campbell, the man we knew and loved. Allow me, Kimisha Campbell Douglas, his wash belly, to walk you through his walk you through the life he lived. Delroy was born to parents Salitel, also known as Mankind, and Joyce Campbell on August 28, 1953. He was the second of 13 children. He attended Maryland Primary School in Hanover and Carmel All Age School in Westmoreland. Growing up, Delroy, or Gigi, as he was affectionately called, was described as the responsible older brother. His sister, Nervalyn, painted this picture of young Delroy. He grew up as a fine young man in the district. His peers looked up to him as a portrait of Christian behavior. You would always find him walking around with his Bible. He took charge of the family as the man of the house when his father migrated to the United Kingdom to work in support of the family. Aston, also called Bakra Smith, later joined the family as his stepfather and helped to shape the man he would become. Delroy started his career early on as a youth. At the age of 17, he sought employment in carpentry and quickly developed the skills to establish his 40-year career journey as a cabinet maker. Delroy believed in allowing his craft to speak for itself and soon accumulated an impressive portfolio of woodworks and glowing customer reviews. His keen attention to detail and unmatched work ethic set him apart as a highly skilled and successful businessman. He could take one look at a piece of furniture and describe in accurate detail any mistakes that were made or what could have been improved to make the piece more durable. He was renowned for designing unique and quality pieces of furniture that would last generations. Cabinet making was not his only passion. Delroy carried, sorry, he made the life altering decision to surrender his life to Christ at the age of 17. His inherent dedication would not allow him though to stay as a mere church goer. He aspired to become a leader in the church and hopefully one day he could pastor a church of his own. He enrolled in the Life Bible College at the Foursquare Gospel Church and completed his study in 1978. He later became a teacher at the institution in eschatology, hermeneutics, and Sunday school pedagogy. Pastors help me with these terms, I'm not familiar with <laughs> He was ordained as a minister on April 14, 2004, and again on August 28, 2011. While his trade and life purpose accelerated, he also fulfilled another goal of starting a family. He married Grace in December 1989, and that union brought forth two daughters, Lacey Ann and myself, as well as a stepson, Raymond. That union lasted 17 years. 
Family was very important to Delroy, and he loved boasting about his two daughters. But just in case Lacey and I would let that go to our heads, he would always remind us, is not uno alone ma have you know? And he was right. Many other persons, particularly women, claimed him as their father. He was a supportive father and honored the role as provider. He never missed an occasion to celebrate us. He was present at every graduation, every prize giving ceremony, and he was known by all of our teachers. My sister Lacey remembers him as a stern and punctual man. He made it his responsibility to take us to school every morning, and on numerous occasions, she was always late, and he would always be threatening to leave her behind, allowing her to walk to school or take the bus. But apparently, he planned her delays in his morning commute because we were never late for school. He later got married to Elaine in July 24, 2009, and moved to Nutshell District in Yorton. He acquired three more stepchildren, Jordan, Jordana, and Jordan. He achieved leadership positions in the church, as we heard previously, and served at the Foursquare Gospel Church and Bullock Mountain, as to note a few. He was very influ influential in his leadership, delivering the word with authority, in truth, and with little regard for pleasing the crowd. Some found him hard to understand, because he often spoke in parables, as we have heard, and used anecdotes, but the fruition of his prophecies and instructions often proved true. Many lives were touched and turned around for the better under his guidance. Delroy and Elaine together passed to the church, Tabernacle of Praise International Ministry in Barry District, St. Catherine, which started in May 2006. Delroy served as well as in his community as a justice of the peace. Daddy lived his life to the fullest and gave until his cup was empty. Even after losing his mobility, he always made an earnest effort to call and check in with his many spiritual children and family. Whether it was a quick how do do or a stern reprimand, he delivered it all in love. I'm sure we will all miss those phone calls. Delroy, Uncle Gigi, Pastor Campbell, left us early Monday morning on March 4, 2024. He died peacefully at his home in Nutshell District. Although his passing was sudden, he left us with comfort. The hymn, It Is Well With My Soul, is one that resonated with close friends and family. While preaching what would be his last sermon, he left the church with a strict warning to not get ready, but to be ready for the second coming of Christ. Delroy leaves behind wife Elaine, children Lacey Ann and Kimisha, grandchildren, three of them, stepchildren Raymond, Jordan, Jordana, and Jordan, sisters, brothers, nieces, nephews, other relatives, friends, and church family. I wish for all of us, under the sound of my voice, wherever in the world you are right now, to stand to your feet and give one last round of applause for the life that blessed us, celebrated us, guided us, and saw us through hard times. Let us honor the life of our father, uncle, grandpa, JP, and pastor, Dr. Bello. Thank you so much. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. To God be the glory. Amen. He had fight a good fight. He have kept the faith and finished his work. And now a crown awaits him over yonder. Indeed, we are honored and blessed to have a servant of God in the house. The messenger. The one who will bring the sermon. Who is overseer. Reverend Harvey De Costa, he will bring the word. But just before he comes, we have the doctor in the house. I'm honored to work with the man of God over the many, many years. None other than Reverend Dr. Delroy West. Make him welcome. And the next vice officer will be the servant of the Lord. Thank you.
Well, so many things said about that man. Oh, my, my apology. My grandmother always say, you don't come before people without saying hello. All protocol observe, please. Amen. Um, I want to sing a song for you, but because of time, I, I wanted to make up something. Hold it a second. There. But if I sing the song that I'm going to make up, we may leave here at 6.30. And that time, it, you can't bury the dead. So I'm going to behave myself and give a little, not in the dish, but a little in the saucer, and then I... Do my song, sit down quick before Evangelist, Reverend Evangelist Edwards, pull my coat. Don't touch me, please. Now, give me that F quickly. That's a little, a little faster, just a little more. Well, 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 my friend is gone. Oh, my friend, yes, he is gone. You see, there were three of us. We stick all together, three days. Now one is gone. Us too. Look at that man over there. Well, Doyle teaches people to drive. Delroy, he makes furniture. And me, I write songs. But we all, we three, we stick together. We don't call each other too often. We don't even see each other's a time. But today I'm here. I'm here. Because my friend is, Lord God is gone. We don't see each other's too often. But Lord, today. My friend is gone. There are so many things I could say about this, that man, but I wouldn't try to go there. But there was one thing, and one day I asked him, why did you tell me that? He said something to me, and I said, Delroy, I, I, well, by the way, I'm Delroy, and that's Doily, and he is still Delroy, isn't he? Right. Now, he said to me, you sing well, you write good songs, but that's not all. So I said, stop your foolishness. All I do is write songs and sing. And he said to me, you're going to pass the church. I laughed at him so much, thinking that he would get upset. All he said to me is, never mind, man. Never mind. You will see, because you're walking into it. And one day I had to say to him, that's after being a pastor at Keith Hall. I said, why did you tell me that? That's not what I wanted. Says not what you want. And then he quote another parable again. And up to this very moment, I don't understand it. So I leave it alone. Let me sing my song and sit down so that the speaker will come with the word. Son, get that thing going there. Get it ready. Good to have you, my friend, on keyboard. Bring it up. You're going through your 
our struggles, our aches and pain. Believing in Jesus, all this won't be in vain. He told us he'll return to take us home with him, but there ain't no grave gonna hold him down. Church, there ain't no grave gonna hold their right down. No, there ain't no grave gonna hold him down. Well, we won't see him around after we lay this body down. But there ain't no grave gonna hold him down. My God, somebody give the Lord a praise in the mic. Give him another praise if you love him. When the master come and call his name, he'll hear. Up from the grave, the royal new body will appear. He'll be changed from mortal to immortality. Now there ain't no grave. Gonna hold him down Lord, there ain't no grave Gonna hold him down No, there ain't no grave Gonna hold him down Church, you won't see him around After we lay this body down but there ain't no grave Gonna hold that right down Gonna hold him down You believe it? Give the Lord a praise There ain't no grave Gonna hold him down Church, you won't see him around after we lay this body down But there ain't no grave Gonna hold him down mm -hmm. You won't see him around After we lay this body down But there ain't no grave Gonna hold him down No, there ain't no grave Gonna hold him down. God bless your heart. Put your hands together as a servant of God come to deliver the word. I said put your hands together and clap them. Amen. Shall we praise the Lord? Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. I promise you I'll take just 10 minutes. Praise the name of the Lord. I want to take this privilege to greet the blessed Holy Spirit. And greetings to host pastor, Reverend Han. Greetings to all the ministers of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And condolences to... Pastor Elaine Campbell and family, praise the name of the Lord. I want everyone to just stand for a second. Everyone, everyone, if you're not sick, I want you to stand for a second. And I want you to look to the person beside you and say, thank God I'm alive. Turn to the next person and say, thank God I'm alive. Turn to the person behind you and say, thank God I'm alive. I hear the sound of a mighty rushing wind. Hallelujah, hallelujah, and it's closer now 
than it's ever been. Can I get a worshiper? I can almost hear the trumpet as Gabriel sounds the call. And at the midnight, somebody praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We'll be going home. I look around me. I see prophecies fulfilled. Signs of the time. They are appearing everywhere. I can almost see the Father. Go get my children And at the midnight cry Hallelujah! Hallelujah! At the midnight cry We'll be going home When Jesus Steps out on the cloud to call his children. The dead in Christ shall rise to meet him in the air. And those that remain. Shall be quickly changed, and at the midnight cry, and at the midnight cry, somebody praise the Lord, and at the midnight cry, we'll be going home. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody praise the name of the Lord. Somebody give God the glory. If you are alive and well, praise the name of the Lord. Even if you are sick, open up your mouth and praise the name of the Lord. David said, let everything that has breath praise the name of the Lord. Somebody shout hallelujah. Shake the foundation of hell. Shout hallelujah. Let the devil know that you're alive and well. And all praises belong to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may be seated. I promise you 10 minutes and we're out of here. I try to be one of the obedient minister. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Revelation chapter 3 and verse 1, if my memory serves me right, it speaks about the seven spirits of God. And the answer for those, for us wanting to know the seven spirits of God is found in Isaiah chapter 11 and verse 2. And what I want to say is that Pastor Delroy Campbell possessed those seven spirits of God. When an individual possesses those seven spirits, then you will bear fruits, as in Galatians chapter 5, the nine fruits. And when you start to bear these fruits, the scripture said, by the fruit, you will know them. And I must say that as Isaiah 11 says in verse 2, the spirit of wisdom, 
The spirit of counsel, understanding, might, spirit of knowledge, spirit of the fear of the Lord, and the spirit of not to judge quickly. And when I got to know Reverend Delroy Campbell, all of these are embodied in him. And it makes him perfect, a soul to go home to God. A couple of days before he died, Pastor Elaine Campbell can attest to it. My wife is there at the back. She can attest to it. He came on our online prayer meeting. And after it was finished, he called me. And Reverend Delroy Campbell poured into me till tears came into my eyes. He started to prophesy unto me. And then he said unto me, I don't normally tell man them thing, you know, but I love you. Those were his final words to me. And I'm truly honored even to stand here to bring the message because to, be, to, to confess when I look at the program that was sent to me and all the persons who are so qualified and even know him before me would be perfect to bring the message. But I was told that I was chosen. Now, Reverend Delroy Campbell has gone home. If I should call his name this afternoon, he will not answer me. He has run his race. He has finished his course. He is going to be called up front and center before the Almighty God. And there the book will be open and it will be between him and who? God. So let every man, and when I say man, it is a representation of human being. Let every man work out their own salvation with fear and trembling. Every one of us have to give an account. And there are two scriptures that each Christian, I'm speaking to Christian now, that they need to know. They need to mark in the Bible. And if I wake you up tomorrow morning and ask you what it said, you must know it. Psalm 66 and verse 18 if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. And so regardless of the title we own in this world, doctor, lawyer, whatever title, and you could be sitting on the pulpit, you could be the, the chief builder for this church, but if I regard sin in my heart, that is why we have so many unanswered prayer. So many unanswered prayer. Because one of the things, I soon get to the message, one of the things that we Christian will try to pretty up is that we say we don't hate one another, but yet still we're going to say, my spirit not take you. That is a pretty thing for still me not like you, me hate you. And if you are by those things in your heart, you could have ball till snot, run out of your nose, and you drink it wherever you kneel. It, it, it mark if you have any sin in your heart. The Bible says the Lord will not. It's not my word. And that is why we have so many unanswered prayers. The second scripture that Christians should have and use it as your measuring stick is Galatians 5, somewhere there from verse when it talks about the fruit of the Spirit. And going up further about 19, verse 19 about, it lists out the things that if you do these things, it clearly states you will not inherit the kingdom of God. Lies, adultery, fornication, 
emulation, sedition, name them. And so we should use those scriptures to measure up ourselves. And the Bible says, let a man examine himself quickly. My theme to you getting that out of the way is, when God calls your name, will he say, come to me or depart? When God calls your name, Delroy's name is called. When God calls your name, will he say, come to me or depart? I'll briefly speak from St. John chapter 11. And it is a story about Lazarus being the best friend to Jesus. And if you ever want to know why Lazarus, why Jesus found a best friend in Bethany and why he always go to Bethany to the house of Mary and Martha is because his boat self is being attended to. It's physical and it's spiritual. I won't get into that. However, his best friend died and was buried for four days. And quickly, many persons speak to you from outside of the tomb of Lazarus. Many messages I've heard is about how Jesus called Lazarus to come forth. And everybody preach, or most persons preach about what happened outside the tomb. But this afternoon, walk with me and let us look what happened inside the tomb. Somebody praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Something happened in that dark place. While the master was outside, something was happening inside the tomb. The Bible said that Mary and Martha said, Master, if you were here, my brother would not die. Somebody praise the name of the Lord. Jesus said, you will see your brother again. Martha said, uh, 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 yes, on the day of resurrection, I will see him. Jesus made a declaration that I am. Come on, somebody praise the name of the Lord. I am. That is why, let me divert a little bit. That is why when negativity is spoken in my atmosphere, it doesn't affect me. Because I have the resurrector inside of me. And as long as you're a child of God, you cannot be dead. Shall we praise the name of the Lord? Because if you have Jesus inside of you, you must be alive and well. Can I back it up with a scripture? The Bible said the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, if it dwells in you, it will what? Quicken! Somebody worship the Lord. And that is why we have hope to see Del Roy again. His body is here, but someday we will see him in eternity. Somebody praise the name of the Lord. So, Lazarus was dead and buried. He was buried for four days. He started to stink. Let me talk to you from inside because we know we have far to go. There are four stages of human decomposition. I read this. I researched it. Praise the name of the Lord. Four stages. The human decomposition is a natural process involving the breaking down of tissues after death. While the rate of human decomposition varies due to several factors, including weather, temperature, moisture, pH, and oxygen level, cause of death, and body position. All human bodies follow the same four stages of human decomposition. According to Dr. Vass, the human decomposition begins around four minutes after the person dies. Four minutes. So all of we are going like say, we have it all. Look good. Bicep and tricep like me. Huh? All of we think say, women will have shape. 90, um, 30, 15, 45. Big shape. We have a process 
to go through when we die. Ashes to ashes. So the four stages are autolysis, bloating, active decay, and skeletonization. Stage one, I'm going quickly. Autolysis, it begins immediately after death. As soon as the blood circulation and respiratory stop, the body has no way of getting oxygen or removing waste. Excess carbon dioxide causes an acidic environment, causing membrane to release, and the enzyme begin to eat the cell from inside out. Rigor mortis take place. Touch your neighbor and say rigor mortis. Rigor mortis cause muscle stiffening. Small blister filled with nutrients appearing on the internal organ and the surface. The body will appear to have a sheen due to the natural blister and the skin top begins to loosen. Follow me. So when you think, say, you're going to stay pretty all of your days, follow me. Stage two, bloating. Leak enzyme from the first stage begin producing gas, sulfur containing compound, releasing to the skin, discoloration. Let me move on. Stage three, active decay, fluid release through your offices, indicating the beginning of active decay. Here, bone, cartilage, and other products may remain, but everything else start to decay. And the final one, stage four, skeletonization. Because the skeleton has a decomposition rate based on the loss of organic or inorganic compound, there is not a set time frame when the skeletonization occurs. But listen to this. 24 to 72 hours after death, the internal organs decompose. Three to five days after death, the body starts to bloat and blood containing foams leak from the mouth and the nose. All of this was happening in the tomb where Lazarus was buried. Follow me. We're talking about what was happening inside the tomb. We're getting to a point to declare who is the resurrector and the life. Eight to ten days after death, the body turns from green to red as the blood decomposes and the organs in the abdomen accumulate gas. Several weeks after death, nails and teeth fall out. One month after death, the body starts to liquefy. According to St. John 11 and verse 43, he called Lazarus from his grave. And pre presently, Jesus Christ is calling you from your grave or whatever bondage you are in. When God calls your name, will he say, come to me or depart? Now hear this. Lazarus in the grave, four days dead. So gas start to develop. Skin start to strip. Start to smell. Enzymes start to eat from the inside. Or what it means that maggot start to feed on him. Praise the name of the Lord. Four days being dead. But I'm going to tell you when it is dead four days, something can still happen. Your name can still be called and something marvelous can still happen. Somebody praise the name of the Lord. Somebody worship God. So when all of this was happening in the grave, Jesus tarried for four days because he knew that nothing is impossible with him. Whatever the conditions are in anybody's life, nothing is impossible with him. So he had to show who he is. He had to show who he is. He had to let the devil know that even when the condition is rotten, I, the Lord thy God, can make a change. Somebody praise the name of the Lord. The Bible said when Jesus walked to the home, 
He saw his, his, his Mary and Martha weeping and he felt a turn in the heart and the Bible said Jesus wept. He said show me, show me, show me where you lay him. Show me where you lay him. They say he's dead for four days. He what stinketh by now. But Jesus said take me to the tomb. Is there anybody here who think uh, that there's nothing that God can do, that nothing good can happen to you? I'm telling you, come to Jesus. Uh, he can change your situation. No, as far as you think you have gone and nothing can happen, God can still do something for you. The Bible said that when he walked into the cemetery, hear me, he had to call a specific name. Because if he had said, come forth, everybody would have get up and walk out of the cemetery. But he was on a mission for a special friend. Somebody he knew. Somebody who loved him. Somebody who honored him. Somebody who served him. Was in a condition that need to be resurrected. And therefore, he went specific. As he went for you, you, you. No one knew how dark the night was when the Lord passed through. But here he found his sheep that was lost. He placed it on his shoulder and brought him back. He left the 90 and 9 and searched for you, 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 you. As he went for Lazarus. Somebody praise God. Am I boring you? Tell me to stop now and I stop. Praise the name of the Lord. I know we have to go. But I need to deliver the message. The Bible said when Jesus went into the cemetery, he prayed to his father so that the people may know who he is. Some of us Christians need to rise up from our juniper tree and let the world know who Jesus is. Let the world understand that you serve a mighty God who is always victorious. My wife is there around the back. She died. Stand up wife. You make them see you. Praise the name of the Lord. She died. We lost a child. She died. Doctor tell me. Prepare to bury her. Bless the name of the Lord. But the God we serve. I remember when she was going down. Hallelujah. She called me to her bedside. And she said to me. Oh God slay me. Yet will I trust him. Somebody praise the name of the Lord. Only when you know your God, you can make statement like that. Though the devil try, I have a resurrector. And there she is. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. I'm talking about the God I know. My mama, second to the last two, practically rotten off. Halfway, and I went to the God I know, and I said, Lord, you said the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. If it dwell in your mortal flesh, it quickly you something can happen. Cut long story short, I've never seen this before, but I have the testimony at home. My mother's to grow back and Neil come back. Praise the name of the Lord. Let me back up a little bit. When I took her to the doctor, the doctor sent me off to the hospital quickly. Doctor said to me, son, I have to go cut off your mommy leg from her here, so I said, what you say? Hallelujah. I said, what you say? I have a God who never fails. I have a God. Hold on. Catch it right there, sir. Catch it right there, sir. I'm a Jamaican. So when I say catch it, you know what I mean. Another testimony. Took her to the hospital. And right before me, she fell dead. My mom, no response. I say, God, me na go ball. Come here, my mother live more like sister and brother than mother and son. And I say, God, when I see the doctor, I try to do everything. I just step back. And I stretch my hand over her. And I said, just as how you raise Lazarus from the dead. 
I call her up now in the name of Jesus Christ. I see her face make up and I see she jerk. I say, thank you, God. Because you know the resurrector. And so, when I'm going to wrap up now, when Jesus walk into the cemetery and when he says, Lazarus, come forth. You know what happened inside the tomb? All of the dry of blood. Hear the master call. All of the organ were rotten. Oh, he told, hear the master call. All the liquefy, skin discoloration. Everything start getting back color. Cause the master call. When the master call, dead situation. When the master call. Blood, dry up blood. Anybody know ever see dry up blood yet? Anybody ever see dry up blood? Every cell talk to them one another. Jesus, I call, come. Come back up, come back up. Roll up back, roll up back, master, call. When Jesus called, you must answer. And when everything start coming back together, sides start pushing and push out. Warm blood start run back in my body. Cause the resurrector call. Blessing death cannot defy the power of God. Hallelujah. Somebody in here need to understand that it's not over. Even though we have a casket in here, it is not over. God has the last say. Your relationship is not over. Consult God. Sickness in your body. It's not over. Consult God. Consult the resurrector. He can put it back together. Husband are going with foolishness. God can lick him down and bring him right back home. It's not over. But the question is, when God calls your name, will you come to him or will he say, depart from me? I know you're not. St. Matthew 11 verse 28 says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will, I will give you rest. You shall find rest for your soul. St. John 6 verse 36 says, And the ones who come to me, I will never send away. Somebody shout praise the Lord. Somebody shout hallelujah. These are scriptures that keep you alive. Isaiah 1 verse 18 says, Come now, let's settle this, said the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, I will make it as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, I will make them as white as wool. Come. Revelation 22 verse 7, 17. Let everyone who is thirsty come. Let anyone who desires drink freely from the water of life. And finally, Joel 2 verse 32. But everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. I won't go into the depart scripture, but I will say holiness has a name and it is Jesus victory has a name turn to your neighbor and say victory has a name and it is Jesus come on say it again victory has a name so when you're leaving out of this house hallelujah I'm talking to everyone in here I can't talk to Reverend Campbell because I'm gone already I'm talking to you when you leave out of here leave out remembering victory has a name and his name is Jesus. Deliverance has a name. And it is. Healing has a name. And it is. Redemption has a name. And it is. The word has a name. And it is. Stand on your feet and shout the name of Jesus. Come on, shout the name of Jesus. Shout the name of Jesus. Shout the name of Jesus. If you want victory, shout the name of Jesus. Promotion, shout the name of Jesus. Healing, shout the name of Jesus. He is the resurrector. He is alive. Nothing can remain dead in his presence. Hallelujah, because he's life in itself.
I know, I know Reverend Campbell would want me to do this. Just allow me five more minutes. Praise the name of the Lord. If you are here, whether you are Christian, meaning Chris by an understand, but you are bear the name, come. If you are not saved, under the hearing of my voice, walk to the altar. We may not know when our number will be called, but not get ready, but be ready. Does Jesus care when my Making an altar call, walk boldly. And the cares, distress, and the way grow weary and long. Oh, yes, he cares. I know he cares. Better you make it up now before it's too late. Before six men bring you back. Praise the name of the Lord. Walk to the altar and give your life to the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Is there one more? One more. Run, come. has been good to us. The songwriter said, he has been good all my life. You have been faithful. Run, come, run, come. And all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, oh, I will say of the goodness of God. One more time. For all my life you have been faithful. Hallelujah. And all my life you have been so, so good. Every breath that I have taken. Oh, I will sing of the goodness. is running after running up to me and running after me oh. Hallelujah He's running after running up Somebody give the Lord a shout of praise. Come on, we're going to pray. Give the Lord a shout of praise. Shout hallelujah. Oh, somebody shout hallelujah. Something is about to happen. Something is happening right at the altar. Something is happening. Somebody has been surrendered. Something miraculous is happening right now. We're going to pray for the people at the altar. young people that stand at the altar it was Wednesday morning a young man died in the state oh Lord Jesus and while he died in the state the mother was getting ready Thursday morning to fly over she was waiting on her other son 
to take her to the airport. But while she was there, the sun did not turn up and she was there thinking that she's missing her flight. And when she called, a doctor answered the phone and said, you guys need to come now. And by the move the man from the surgery to the hospital, he pronounced dead. Now the two brother is dead. I don't know which one of us will be the next victim. But if our soul right with God, it shall be well as you stand up behind to him. I hope to God that you make it right. Let us pray. I feel the Holy Ghost coming. With your head bows, the altar. Father, in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Almighty God, for the word that has been spoken. Father, we thank you for your servant. But God, we honor you, God, for your people that walk down to this altar. And by the authority of the Holy Spirit, we command every plan of the devil to be rendered. We render the plan of the devil powerless out of the life of these people in the name of Jesus. Father, every plan that the enemy set, we reverse it in the name of Jesus. And we claim life upon them right now. Satan, the church is against you. The Holy Ghost is against you. Take your fight from these people. Father, we release salvation upon them right now. It's not by might nor by power, but by the Spirit, said the Lord. People, receive the Father. Receive your Father in Jesus' name. Somebody declare in Jesus' name. Uh, what a day. I've, I don't know about you, but we are moving to the cemetery in a few minutes from now. But before we move to this, oh Lord God, I wish somebody surrendered to God. I'm going to say to you this afternoon, uh, as you walk to this altar, you listen to the word. and You don't know what lies around the men, uh, and you're ready to make it right with God. I'm not going to pull a carnal gun on you and say, lift up your hand. I'm going to say to you, those that are standing here, if you're willing right here in this funeral service to say yes to the Lord, I'm going to ask you to lift your hand above your head. Don't let nobody hold you down. Reba somebody surrender him I wish I had some Holy Ghost people that are willing to worship God somebody open your mouth and say look what the Lord our Lord Jesus look what the Lord has done Sister Helene Campbell worship God because something miraculous is happening in the funeral Woo. thank you Jesus Holy, let we stop, Lord God. Holy, those that lift up your hand, I'm going to ask you to do something here. I'm going to walk over this side. I'm going to ask those that lift your hand, will you walk over here, walk over here. We're not bowing you, we're not begging you, we are declaring the word of God. You lift up your hand and you know that you know that you're willing to go with him as from this day. I'm just asking you to walk over here because oh Lord God Almighty here. Oh somebody worship the Lord. I lift my right hand to the throne of God and I'm going to declare as I lift my right hand I ask Heavenly Father that you will consume my hand with your anointing. Woman of God I call heaven and earth to record this afternoon. That you have said yes to the Lord. I now seal you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Woman, I seal you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. I, I believe you, you will see daddy over young uh, Lord Jesus. I, I now seal you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. I call heaven and earth to record this day. They have said yes to the Lord. I seal you in the name of Jesus. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, somebody clap your hand for victory. Somebody Somebody clap your hand for victory. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. You may go. I'm going to ask the congregation to stand and the family to sit. It's prior time for the family. I'm asking the congregation to stand. And, oh Lord Jesus and the family to sit. We're going to pray for the family. That no devil will take any power, any authority over their lives. Father, in the name of Jesus, 
we place a family member in your hand. Father, they need you now more than ever. Jehovah is your name. You promise that when we mourn, you will be there for us. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you will stand by them. As you were with Moses, I declare that you will be with them. Father, cover them under your blood. And, Father God, if there is any amen situation is rising up, I curse it in the name of Jesus. I pray, God, that the peace that passeth all human understanding standing will rest remain and abide upon them. I declare goodness and mercy to follow them all the days of their lives. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost, we release you with the power of God in Jesus' name. I will now hand over back to Amen Reverend Udham as he will give the instruction as we move on. Somebody praise God. Amen. Praise the Lord. What a time of refreshing. This certainly has not been a funeral service, but a service of thanksgiving and reflection. Amen? Amen. Just two quick things. One is that the Honorable Costas had to leave early, share the um, prior engagement, and so asked to apologize for having to leave before the service was through. But we thank God she was able to make it in the first place and to be here. The second thing is the recessional. The ministers will go first, and then the casket, and then the family members, and then the rest of the congregation. So when the casket get to that lady in red, if you don't mind me saying so, there's a, an opening there. We just go through there to the person at the side, and the rest of the congregation will follow. Amen? Amen. So back to What a word. What a word. Amen. Praise God. Do we have a praise in the house? Amen. So we will proceed through Barry, or through Jupen, um, and to the Tabernacle of Praise. We'll pause there for viewing and then proceed from there, viewing and floral tributes, and proceed from there to Dovecott. So can we stand? Bishop, can you lead us in the recessional hymn? And, um, all right, to my left, your right, there are refreshments that you can pick up as we move on the journey. Thank you very much. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. What a day of rejoicing that will be when we all see Jesus. We will sing and shout the victory while we walk. Every day, just one. 
sister are the vehicle on the outside you can travel with her thank you very much god bless you and remember refreshment is to my left from the podium in a reach Thanks to the musicians as well. Thanks to the videographers too.
ओके Otherwise, you are looking at me, I'm going to tell you about camera. 